Ah, Craig Kelly. Can't tell the difference between him and a bulldog. And not just physically either, mentally, he forgot to renew the lease on his own website, which allowed some mysterious legend to take over Craig Kelly MP and put up, brace yourselves, Craig Kelly giving himself quite a generous rear admiral using KFC gravy as the lube. I'm sorry, I don't think you appreciate what's happening here. That photo now greets you when you type in craigkellymp.com. What a perfect encapsulation of you not renewing your webpage, Craig. You just fisted yourself. Can't even renew a website. His friends in the press writing articles like, Oh my God, friendly dirty fat Jesus controlling Craig Kelly website. Naturally, that directed 100,000 people to Craig Kelly's website that is now, thanks to this anonymous genius, entirely devoted to explaining why Craig Kelly was was a, what was the wording you selected? Massive f**k head. Yes, that's the one. Massive f**k head. Naturally, the idiots of the Telegraph then said, oh f**k, took it down. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what victory looks like. <laughs> Sir, my very loud fedora is doth tip to you to the point that I am indistinguishable from Michael Jackson in Rock My World. Well, not that f**ked up. He looked more dead in that than he did in Thriller. But you did rock my world, mysterious meme lord. This is merely to build on your noble work in convincing anyone who's a fan of Craig Kelly and not in that Get ready, everybody. He's about to do something stupid. Way, like if you actually think Craig Kelly's advocating for your freedom, let me tell you, the closest thing he advocates for is freedom furniture. He's a furniture salesman by trade. No wonder he's so desperate not to leave parliament. That sounds worse than being a piece of furniture, which Craig would excel at, as I don't think I've ever seen any footage of him moving. And now he's using that 30 plus years experience to reel you in with bait like, Stop the lockdowns. Oh really? Sorry, my mistake. It turns out he's not running for federal parliament. Judging from that call, he's running for every premier of every state at exactly the same time. Serving the people a day a week in each state. Last I heard, as is now his bio at Craig Kelly MP, Craig was a fairly unremarkable backbench liberal MP whence he described Clive Palmer being voted out of Parliament as It's good riddance to Clive Palmer. He was actually a menace. Yes, finally! A politician with some f***ing convictions. A man is not afraid to speak his mind and declare I am leading the United Australia Party at the next federal election. That he's decided to become the federal leader of the party he's glad was gone? What's he going to announce next? Hey kids, I'm starring in a remake of The Mask. No, no, don't worry. I'm sure this isn't just the democratic equivalent of big man Tyrone, where you can pay him to say whatever you think is funny. It's just a coincidence that virtually everything Craig Kelly says is funny. Large men, truly large men like Kelly and Clive, who I assume travel around on motorbikes. They can set aside their differences and wheeze for a common cause. Just because Craig Kelly's the federal leader of a party set up by a man he described as a menace to parliament and is 100% bankrolled by that man, doesn't mean that this is a fairly accurate depiction of what's going on. No, Craig Kelly claiming, I decide policy, I am the leader of the United Australia Party. Which is exactly what what he did for less than 24 hours before not even Clive Palmer, an assistant of Clive Palmer said, <clears throat> Shut the f up. Roger that! Just because he's now the head of a party run by a man who he was glad was kicked out of parliament and is officially on record that he has to do whatever the man he was glad was kicked out of parliament wants him to do in parliament, I'm sure there's a great reason for Craig Kelly to be more or less that prostitute that the hologram wife puts herself over in Blade Runner 2049. Very good analogy for someone who can't run a website. But Craig's reason for doing it... The crude reality is that I'll have greater resources. Fucking hell. His reasons are so transparent that even he has to admit... Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm doing it for the money, yeah. Craig Kelly must have such a good message to override the fact that he clearly doesn't believe in the message. What is this wildfire idea that no one's ever heard before? Liberal and Labor have destroyed our economy. You were a sitting Liberal MP for 11 years. That's not exactly still having your Kmart trainee badge on and deciding Tried it out, not for me. Eleven! In the time you presided over the housing market, most people moved house. 
or if they're from my generation, they're still in the same share house they were in at uni, but that's because you were presiding over the housing market the whole time. Yet in one week, literally a week after joining the United Australia Party. They've made a trillion dollar debt. Yes, we got that from your very clever stunt of printing how much that looks like, which I've got to say, not that impressive. I think Harry Potter had more money. It also looked more real. But Craig, did you just plum forget that the key reason we have that much debt is because the Liberals, who Craig Kelly was loosely associated with from a distant time in the past that historians have labelled February, where he and his quote, great friends, that he now thinks have quote, destroyed jobs and families. I'm assuming the time period in which the Liberals started destroying jobs and families was somewhere between February and August, which historians are now referring to as the Craig Naissance. But the pillar reason we have a trillion dollars of debt is because the Liberals have allowed the richest people and the largest corporations in this country to get away with tax evasion so great that up to a third of the ASX 200 don't pay a cent of tax. This teenager saying, yeah, just you sloopy thanks, just paid more tax than the ExxonMobil he bought it at. They paid zero dollars, zero under Craig's watch, which to be fair, I'm sure will change now that he has to do exactly what a billionaire wants who entered parliament, it seems almost exclusively to reduce his own taxes. Police using rubber bullets on the streets of Melbourne, the army on the streets of Sydney. Is this the Australia we want? Fight back, join the United Australia Party. Well, I know from personal experience that that's exactly what you want beefy is when I visited your house while you were selling it. Even put up a flag of your favorite country. And you know why? Because that's what people do in that part of the world when they visit someone's house. They give them a nice little gift, Craig. Yet you, Mr. Anti-Police State, returned the favor by trying to get the police to throw me in the slammer. He was that upset, upset, that I wasn't thrown in the dungeons for daring to dirty an MP's house, no less. Nah, mate, you don't understand. Cops should be enforcing ridiculous laws specifically for MPs, because we're, you know... Better than everyone else? Well, if you took the words out of my mouth, I didn't say it. How's he voted the last decade? Strongly against more scrutiny on federal police at ASIO. As a Lib, he would have voted for every increase in policing powers over the last decade. And that might be because he watched Mike and Molly and thought, this Mike character really speaks to me. Or it could be for the same reason his next call to arms range so, so hollow. Can you guess? No one's ever said it before. Protect freedom of speech. Choices for all Australians. That is from a YouTube video where the comments are turned off. An official message from a party headed by a man who threatened to bankrupt me because my free speech pissed him off. Now at this point, you're probably wondering, like a woman from his electorate wondered who wrote to him on his Facebook page, words to the effect of, you don't actually believe what you're saying, do you? At which point, she was blocked from his page along with anyone else who dares question him before he was blocked from Facebook altogether, at which point he started whining about, this is an interference with democracy. Oh, come on, come on. Craig Kelly is the kid at school that was always bitching. No, I'm not out. I'm not out, it was on the line. And then as soon as he brings his own ball, no, nah, you're out. F off, Kevin, you're out. Cause it's my ball, can f off. Craig Kelly is not a free speech warrior. Craig Kelly is what happens when a joke candidate actually gets elected. Interrupting your precious viewing of do dinosaurs still exist to say, not only are dinosaurs still alive today, that you could easily make- They might alive. exist again if Clive gets his pack. Let me tell you something. Craig Kelly has about as much chance of becoming the next PM as Pat from Sticky Fingers does. Pat actually probably would be a better PM too, as at least he'd fall into the ABC charter that Triple J should quote, stay in its f***ing lane. So what's the point? Why is Craig making a massive ass of himself somewhere in Australia every eight milliseconds? Why to get his quote, good friends back in, of course. I have many great friends in that Liberal Party room. The clues in the name. The United Australia Party was the OG Liberal Party until they f***ed up the war so much that Robert Menzies had to dissolve it and then came back saying, no, I'm the same man, but just uh, my background's blue now. Craig just reversed it back to yellow. And you know why? It's amazing. It's almost as genius as CraigMP.com. One in five Australians were hesitant about getting the vaccines. That is a hell of a lot of people for Craig to pander to with messages like, after COVID-19 vaccines, 487 deaths and 52,546 adverse events. 
We need a government inquiry now. But the Liberals can't be seen endorsing that, and so what happens is that Craig Kelly's votes get bundled into the Liberals through preferences. Exactly what Clive did in the last election of Are you ready for a new paradigm of politics? Clive Palmer presents both major parties. Someone had to say it. And then as soon as it was over, yes, Liberals got elected and it was all because of me. Sucked in. And now they're going to pull it again. That is why you've got to follow Linda Seymour's example. You've got to point out wherever you come across his supporters, does he actually believe any of it? Because to me, he's nothing more than a furniture salesman selling what appears to be the boldest and most ambitious tax dodge in history. As the longer the libs are in, the less tax Clive Palmer has to pay, the better the stunts for Kelly as he stands in a press conference saying, Oh my God, now there's two mounds. I know who's responsible for this, Liberal and Labor. Vote Liberal. All you need to know is that Craig Kelly is essentially on a kamikaze mission for ScoMo. ScoMo saw that he was hemorrhaging votes for his complete mismanagement of COVID, and to shore up that flank, he said, Craig, I uh, need you to kill yourself to save your party. Yep, okay, we're doing this, boss. No, no, mate, I mean electorally, not actually. Oh, oh yeah, right, yep, no worries. You are actually dead set on sending a message to the Liberal and Labor Party. Don't vote for a minor party like United Australia or One Nation. They're just Liberal Party preference sponges. Vote Labor, because if there's one thing that causes disunity in the Labor Party, it's winning an election. No, but seriously, at the least, check out your local independent candidate, because they're going to do a better job than Craig Kelly. Yes, even crazy John McDonald, who's only policy is, let's build ant nests on every street. Why? I don't know. At least he believes what he's saying. So, like and subscribe if you see through Craig Kelly's game. Please share and comment below. Command.